Of all the classic economy cars, this is the cleverest. It's also the most versatile, and I reckon the most characterful as well. This is a Citroen 2CV. In this video, I'm not gonna talk about the conception of the 2CV per se, because this is a later one. And if we're honest, it's not even a 2CV. Here is a 1986 Citroen 2CV6 Dolly. And today I'm gonna to talk about how the 2CV6 came about, what's under the skin, and then have a look around one of the few cars I really aspire to own. The 2CV was launched in 1948 in an attempt to truly motorize France. And not only was it a cheap economy car, but it was so innovative that it's still remarkable to this day. But that wasn't wasted. Every little innovation was something that enabled this remarkable car to do its job, and it paid off. 3.8 million 2CVs were produced between 1948 and 1990. But that's not all. The 2CV spawned many variants, such as the Ami, Diane and Mahari. Add it all together and Citroen built over 9 million 2CV-based vehicles. I could go on. Eggs, ploughed fields, umbrella on wheels, blah blah blah. It's a 2CV. We all know the basics. Over its long life, the little tin snail was gradually improved, culminating in a car that performed very differently to the one that was introduced back in 1948. And by the time this one was built in 1986, it had morphed into a character car, something that was a statement of your personality. The biggest change over all those years was the engine, which rose to a gargantuan 602cc from 1968, making a dizzying 29 brake horsepower. All 2CVs have an air-cooled flat twin which sits right up here at the front, driving the front wheels through the gearbox back here. Front wheel drive was rather unusual at the time, although Citroen already did it with the traction Avant. But that meant it was compact and therefore there was more room for passengers inside. The 602cc engine in this one led to the name 2CV6. As the car didn't meet the original 2CV tax class anymore, it was now really a 3CV. Now, 29 brake horsepower doesn't sound like a lot, and to be honest, it isn't. But it's enough to hustle these little things along, up to and exceeding the national speed limit. So, why do you need any more? I think the engine could be part of the fun, as you can really, really ring it out in every gear, and barely exceed any speed limits while cornering on the door handles. It's amazing fun. Here is that little 602cc engine down here. And it's incredibly compact, obviously only two cylinders, so it is, but it sits right up at the front, way in front of the front axle. And then behind that you can see the gearbox here, which obviously drives the front wheels. At the side of the gearbox you'll see, they're the brake discs. So this car's inboard disc brakes, which obviously means that the centre of mass stays within the chassis, less unsprung rate, and all that kind of stuff. It also means it's incredibly easy to get out the brakes to service them. Let's just hope that the engine right there and the oil filter right there don't spring an oil leak with the brake discs right there above those you will see the exhausts one for each cylinder on each side now this being air cooled it can't have the kind of heater that a water cooled car could the exhaust pipe goes up from the engine obviously through these heat exchangers and then out down there and fresh air comes in here through the heat exchanger and then up into the cabin through these cardboard tubes cardboard hot engine now that's a recipe for fun bloody hell But all this does mean that it's ridiculously simple. There is no cooling system, save for a little oil cooler behind the fan. There's no distributor and you can get it going with a starting handle. But it's also very clever. Radial tyres were brand new back in 1948 and the 2CV had them right from the off. They've got rack and pinion steering, front wheel drive, but they aren't the most important bits. Because you might have noticed that there doesn't seem to be much suspension under the bonnet. And that's because it's under the body. 2CVs use a clever suspension system that's longitudinal underneath the car, with massive cans with springs inside them allowing interconnection front to rear, with leading and trailing arms taking the suspension through shock absorbers to the wheels. And the result is that the car kind of self-levels 
it's mega comfortable and it has massive suspension travel. This is the 2CV's party piece, a suspension system so clever that it acts completely differently to most other cars. These little things look like they're going to fall over in a corner, but they never will. They're designed with that body roll in mind to have as much suspension travel as possible to make driving over terrible farm tracks a breeze. You've got to bear in mind the economic and social climate when these cars were conceived. It was the 1930s and the 1940s. A lot of the roads were terrible and World War II got in the way as well. The French economy of the 1940s wasn't the best to say the least. After the 2CV stopped being a truly mainstream model with the introduction of the Citroen Visa and the effects of the oil crisis wearing off, the 2CV took on a new life. They began to sell as a character car, driven by the kind of people who wanted to be a bit different and wanted to drive something alternative. In 1976, Citroen introduced the Spot, the first special edition 2CV, and from then on we were flooded with different tin snails. As I mentioned before, this one is a Dolly, which is a special edition launched in 1985, here in white and green. Apart from that colour, you also get a couple of other special little bits, including a bit of chrome, up-spec bumpers, hubcaps, and a couple of niceties inside, like an interior light. We're talking proper, high-end luxury here. The Dolly is pretty interesting to me, though, as it was very popular. Citroen sent them over to Britain in batches, one colour at a time. But not all the colours were as popular as each other, so Citroen dealers ended up trading them between themselves to get the colours that they wanted. Some dealers got so desperate that they swapped BXs for 2CVs, such as the demand. Other dealers had so many cars that they swapped body panels between them, creating cars with three colours. So you could have a white and green car with a red bonnet, and they called them dolly mixtures. How wonderful. The renaissance of the 2CV was a big thing here in Britain. And amazingly, the peak year for UK sales was 1986, the year this car was built. They were more popular here than they were in France by this point. We loved our 2CVs, as did Germany, who topped the sales charts at the time. It's really not hard to see how these got the nickname the Tin Snail. They are such a characterful shape, and it's so of the time as well to have such an organic looking shape to a car. Little headlamps with their own bowls look like their eyes, and it also means that you can really, really easily swap bulbs, etc. And the front grille is this little tiny thing. And as it's an air-cooled engine, you need to keep the engine warm in cold temperatures. So they come with a grill muff, and this one is fitted here. You see, it just clips in at the side there. And when you're running below, I think it's 15 degrees. I'm not 100% sure, actually. In fact, I think it might be below 10 degrees. You should really put this grill muff on in order to keep the engine warm. If you don't put that on, the engine will wear prematurely, and that's no good for anybody. The tyres on a 2CV are little tiny, I think they're 125 section tyres. In fact, let's have a look. Look at that, proper Michelins on this one. Is it 125? Yep, 125, there we are. Little 125 section tyres, these are radials as well, and radials were brand brand new back in 1948 when this car was launched, and these particular Michelins were developed directly for the 2CV. Another thing I like about the exterior of the 2CV are these door handles, which are these little paddle things that twist to open the door. Obviously you can see there just how ridiculously shallow, just how ridiculously thin the doors are, and that is the lock there. And now you'll see this boot lid, which has this lovely portrait of Dotty on. And that's the kind of thing that 2CV owners love to do. 2CVs are an icon of individuality. They're not the kind of cars driven by people who want to fit in anywhere. They're driven by people who love to show their individuality. And this is a perfect display of that. In the boot, obviously, there are no struts. There's a prop there, which I'll put up in a minute. But there is a surprising amount of room here. There is a spare as well underneath there, but I don't have any hands at the moment. And it does open up into the main part of the cabin. There's no separation between luggage and people. But that is quite a good usable space, despite the fact that the car itself is pretty small. The most amazing part about a 2CV is how simply everything goes together. This boot lid, for example, you just put it up and then you slide it across and that's how the boot lid comes off. It's just ridiculously simple. It is Meccano for adults. It is Meccano for adults. Now, 
inside the 2CV, you do feel a little bit hemmed in. It is very, very narrow in here, but there's loads and loads of headroom, which you can't see because that's a terrible camera angle. But oh well, you have this big thin rim steering wheel, which is lovely, two spoke as well, proper Citroen. And it is very, very comfortable. The seats are very, very soft. They are exceptionally soft and you, are, you sit very, very comfortably in here. The pedals are in a great position. The driving position is really quite wonderful. It's fantastic. The steering wheel is a little bit upright, yeah, but that's to be expected of a car this small and one of this age. But the pedals are in a really, really nice position in front of you and the dials are clear. Although the windscreen, very, very small, the scuttle is exceptionally high. But the most quirky thing about the interior of the 2CV is not how basic it is, it's not the enormous shelf down here, it's not the fact that that's the wiper motor, it's the gear lever, which I'm sure everybody knows about already. But it's a cheap little plastic thing, I expect it to be like a pool ball almost there, but it is just a little plastic thing. But it's a standard H pattern, but it's got a dog leg first gear and it points out to the dashboard here. We're in neutral now, so it's down and back for first gear, and then just push, and it pops us back into neutral, and we'll pop up and go up into second, and then back again for third, and then back in and up for fourth gear down there. Reverse, if we go back out into neutral, reverse is down and forwards there. It's completely standard. It's just a little bit odd with it being in the dashboard and it, be, it pivoting on itself. There is also a diagram in front of you on the dials if for some reason you forget how to use a manual gearbox. Of course you have this proper two-spoke Citroen steering wheel, which is not actually as big as I expect it to be. Of course it's got a very, very thin rim, but it's a lovely little steering wheel. And you have very, very simple instrumentation. Your speedometer there with a little odometer in it, which is only five digits. Obviously it goes up to 70 miles per hour. Wow, that's basically warp speed in one of these. And of course, a little fuel gauge down there. And your switches are incredibly simple as well. We have a check for your brake fluid warning light, your hazards. Oh, that makes such a wonderful click. It makes a little chirp as well, actually. There you go. That's just delightful, fantastic. And of course, your windscreen wipers. And that is a little pump for your wash as well. No electronic washers here, just manual ones. And the washer jet itself, just there, just that one little washer jet there. You see, there you go, there's instructions for the muff. On below 10 degrees, off above 15 degrees. And of course, also rear fog lamp, because you need that by 1986 in the UK. It's a legal requirement, even though the 2CP did its best to circumvent all of the regulations in the world. Uh, and Citroen did as little as they could to the car to keep it fresh in order to avoid having to get type approval from the government because this wouldn't really have been legal in the, in the mid 80s, but oh well. Aside from that wonderfully weird gear lever, there is this little turning knob here, which if I just throw it through there, you'll be able to see that opens up the vents on the front, which means you get loads and loads of fresh air coming in. And then if we close it again, That closes up there. The handbrake is this here. I'm not going to pull that because we will roll backwards here. And here is a control for your heater. There's no heater fan. It's all just done through air coming through into the cabin. But obviously you have cold and then across there for hot. You have your ignition barrel down here. And of course, no ignition lock. You are free to just turn the steering wheel as much as you want. We're still in that age. And down here to the right, there's the choke. There is a little light there. I think there's a little light there that lights up when the choke is on, which is pretty handy. And your column stalks are a little bit odd in a 2CV. Here is obviously your indicator, left and right. That is exceptionally basic and you can see the wiring for it even. These are properly utilitarian little cars. And now on the right hand side you have a slightly quirkier stalk. This is for your lights and it turns around, which is pretty cool. Let me just interrupt there because I've got the light stalk completely wrong because this is one of the most confusing parts of a 2CV because it's weird and unlike any other car because of course it is. Not only is it a Citroen but it's also a mad character car from the 1940s. With the stalk turned to zero it is nothing no matter what you do with the stalk. 
but if you turn it round to V, that is Ville, which is French for town. If you have the stalk pushed away from you, that is dipped beam, but if you have it pulled towards you, it is side lights. And if you turn it round again and you push it back away from you, that is dipped beam, but if you pull it towards you, that is then main beam. So yeah, two sous vide lights are a bit weird and you can have dipped beam on both V and R, but that's just the way it is and they seem to work, so there you go. Now, you probably have to see here, ridiculous amounts of headroom. These are really, really tall cars compared to how wide they are, because I am right up against the door here. But I am perfectly comfortable here. These seats are lovely and soft. And now the windows, and Citroen didn't want to waste time with wind down windows or sliding windows. They wanted to do something a little bit different, something that didn't use any space as well. And so they used these flap up windows here, which if you push this here, that releases the window and then and then goes up there and there's a little catch above your hand here which holds the window open so that is your open window in a 2CV and then to close it again you need to use a little bit of force so if we unhook it from the latch here you've just you've just got to let it fall like that and that sounds like it's going to break every time but that's the way it is there's so many things in this car that seem completely logical and there are so many things that also seem completely ridiculous. Like the state of where those wipers park. Fantastic, and also obviously the wiper motor being right there. The scuttle being so high, but of course that's so you've got your vent flap there. And having the gear lever here and having the handbrake here means the floor is completely open and flat. So there's loads and loads of room to move about in here. If you ever wondered how to open the doors on a 2CV, there's this little protruding metal rod here that you pull up and that opens your door. Obviously nothing on the doors at all, no windows obviously because the mad fold up window there. That's your lock unit there, it pokes out so much. These doors are ridiculously thin. You just have this little strap here to pull the door closed. Now again in the back of a 2CV there's actually quite a lot of room here. I mean I've got enough leg room and obviously loads of headroom even though the roof does slope back down here when you're right at the back of the car the weirdest thing though is the doors and it's the same story in the front because they're obviously an odd shape so you actually sit behind the door you sit next to this rear window here and so getting in and out in both the front and back is a little bit weird it's not as easy as you might think the interior of the 2cv is a great lesson in simplicity and utilitarianism although possibly austerity as well there aren't any luxuries in here. There are some seats, a steering wheel, a gear lever, some pedals, and not very much else. If you know anything about me, you'll know that I love British Leyland. But if you know me really well, you know that I love Citroen. The way that they went about designing vehicles is something to behold. The ingenuity and downright insanity that led to some of the most interesting cars ever to grace the roads. And this is one of them. It's odd in an utterly adorable way but all of the oddness makes perfect sense when you think about it. This is what Citroen could do, and this is when they were truly great. It's as French as garlic flavoured toothpaste, and one day I will own one. Some cars are cult icons. They become part of the culture and society of a nation in a particular era, and there's no doubt that the 2CV fits that bill. But the 2CV is even more than that. It's an engineering icon as well. It's so well designed, a genuinely clever car that fully deserves the recognition it now gets. Thanks to Paul from Live to Drive for letting me film Dotty the 2CV. Please check out his great channel for more Dotty content, and if you enjoyed, please consider subscribing to my channel, and I'll have more coming along next week.